Hi everybody, my name is Larry Randolph and this is my friend Brian Woosley. And Brian is going to show us today how he makes wooden bows for boxes, whether they're turned or flat work. Now, I've known Brian, what'd you say you've been in the club for six years, About right? six years, yeah. Okay, so we're both members of the Wood Turners of Southwest Missouri. And if you really want to get to know some of the experts around when it comes to woodworking, get involved in your local wood turning club, one of the AEW chapters anywhere in the United States, and there's several around the world, or a flat work club. I guarantee that you're going to find that there's lots of information out there that your fellow club members have picked up over the years that they can teach you in short order like Brian's going to teach us today. So, Brian, why don't we just go ahead and jump right in and uh, show them what you do. Works for me. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. So some of the different samples uh, or examples of way of that I've done the ribbon is through doing laminates. As you can see on this, this is maple and purple heart put onto a walnut turned bowl, turned box, I mean. And this is kind of the way it starts out. And there's, you can use so many different varieties of ribbon. You can make it like this, or you can use a natural wood like a black and white ebony, which it makes a beautiful bow, especially when it's mounted onto a box made of, or a turning made of uh, bird's eye maple. Another beautiful wood is a native here to, in the Midwest. This is a flame box elder, and it makes an absolute beautiful bow and ribbon on a box. So one of the things I wanted to show you was these are flat ribbons and this is a ribbon that's kind of curved up. This is the way I started making my ribbons at first and after a couple broke off and they're very hard to repair, I kind of quit doing it that way. Uh, they just look, just looks terrible when one of those things breaks off. Some of the other samples or examples of bows that I've done, let me set this aside. Is, this is a spalted yellow heart box with a again a uh, maple and purple heart ribbon and bow and you don't always have to make a complete bow you can make elements of the bow and use them just as a handle just use them as a handle on a lid for a for a box or a, whether it's turned or flat work doesn't really matter this box is uh can't remember what the wood is made out of this box is made out of alder and the bow is zircotti. And as you can see, it has nice black and brown grain running through it. And when the light hits it, it's absolutely beautiful. Another box that I have made here, and this is out of uh, Bubinga. The ribbon and bow is made of canary wood. And as you can see, it has beautiful colors and, and stripes in it. So you don't have to laminate your ribbon to make a beautiful bow. If you have a nice piece of wood that has some beautiful grain, beautiful um, color to it. Use that as your bow and ribbon. Okay, so if you're going to, the, to uh, if you decide to do a laminate in order to make your ribbon multiple colors or a multiple or a particular design, then the bandsaw is the best way to cut that. And there's certain safety things and certain things you want to take into consideration when you're using your bandsaw. First of all, your piece of wood that you're going to make your laminate out of, make sure the two outside pieces of your ribbon are already, set, are already smooth. The blade will give you a smooth enough cut to glue up, but you don't want to glue it up, sand your two outside edges, and then have your outside edges thinner than what you want. Safety on the bandsaw, of course, is keep your hand away from the blade. Always keep pressure on pushing the wood against the fence uh, forward of the blade. Have a push stick handy to finish the cut and don't put any pressure against the wood on the back side of the blade. If you do, what, you, what you'll end up doing is pinching the blade and developing a lot of heat. You'll burn your wood or, and you'll, cause, you'll shorten the life of your blade. So let's go ahead and cut one. Keeping your hand back here. And away from the blade. Until you get all the way through your cut. And 
And now you safely have a beautiful wood that you can glue together. Okay, so the next step, of course, is doing a glue up, and I'm not going to make you watch me spread glue on the boards. These I've already glued up, but there's a couple things that I'd like to share with you about doing a glue up. First of all, use a stiffener block on either side of your, of your thin laminates, and that'll keep them from turning out wavy from the unequal pressure of the clamps. I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the clamp now. One of the other things that I like to do is I always put down a piece of poster board on my workbench, which happens to be my table saw is my favorite workbench. But that keeps the, helps keep the glue off of the work surface down here. After you take this out, then of course you can see you have a beautiful glue up. There's no wavy in the, in the, uh, in the laminate. Everything is nice and even and, and evenly pressed. And the other tip I'd have for, for somebody doing glue ups is use a little painter's tape on your clamps and that will help keep the glue from sticking to your clamp bars. Okay, so the next step is to print out your pattern and then fasten your pattern onto the wood. What I like to do is I use uh, painter's tape and stick that to the wood first. The painter's tape makes it easy to remove the pattern later on. It also, believe it or not, lubricates your scroll saw blade and gives, extends the life of your, of your scroll saw blade. Next, I'm going to take my pattern. I'm going to go over here to my spray booth and put some spray adhesive on it. And then we're going to count to about 25 and attach it. So the next step then is to get out your favorite spray adhesive. I like the 3M77. It works very, very good. Um, and then we're going to spray a little adhesive on the back of our pattern and we're going to take it back and just stick it onto that blue painter's tape. One of the things I do first is take a corner, bend it down like so. Did it, did it backwards. Bend it down like so. That gives me something without glue to hold on to. Give it a good shake. A good coat of glue. And then count to about 25 and let that glue harden just a little bit. Back to the wood. So the next step then is just to attach it to the blue painter's tape. And you're good to go. If you want to, you can take a razor blade and trim off your excess, but you don't really have to do that. Now we're ready to drill pilot holes inside the different elements of the loop and take it to the scroll saw. Okay, so the next step then, of course, is to drill the access holes for your scroll saw blades. We're going to do one in each side of these, inside each loop. And you would do that on every one of the loops in your pattern, but for today we're only going to do one. So the next thing we need to do is cut out the eight elements of making the bow. There's six that go on the outside edge and two that go in the middle. For time, I'm only going to cut out one. I have some others already cut out that we'll pick up with in a little bit later. First thing you do is cut out the centers of your uh, elements. So what we need to do is get the blade fed through your feed hole there. Make sure you put the tension on your blade. The most important thing when you're scroll sawing, you stand directly in front of your work. If you stand off slightly to the side, it's harder and harder than heck to follow that line. So stand watching right in front. And don't worry if you go off your pattern a little bit, you're the only one in the whole world who will ever know it. Start by feeding your cut down one side. come back, reverse it, go back in backwards, and then pick up your cut and carry it around.
Now we're going to pop that piece out. Turn your saw off. After you remove your piece, always feel it. Make See how hot it is? You want it to be a little bit warm, but if you're finding out that it's getting hot, your blade is dull, change your blade. So the next thing we need to do now is go to the next loop. I have a little arthritis in my hand, so I can't always get the blade good and tight. Put the tension back on your blade, and you're going to do the same thing. You'll start a cut, and then you'll reverse it and pick it around, pick it up. Reverse it, pick up your cut, Now the insides are cut out and we'll do the cut we'll cut out the outside. And there we have an element cut out. And like I said before, you're going to do that eight times. Next, we're going to go over to the sander. And we're going to clean up any marks on this outside radius and sand it and raise the grain. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to sand this. If we're out of the line a little bit, we can sand it to the pattern. But the main thing is we want to take out any saw mark blades. So I personally, I take the backing off of this. This is typically here, so you have a hard back to press against, but I like the flexibility in the sanding strip. It makes it easier to sand contoured shapes. Still have a little mark right there, so we'll take get that out. Looking good. So the next step, of course, is to sand off any sanding marks and try to get it as smooth as possible. Here's uh, I'm going to show you here why I use uh, painter's tape. 
underneath my, this is how easy your pattern comes off. So what we're going to do is we're going to just and sand that once or twice on each side. Look at it, make sure we don't have any sander marks from the belt sander over there. We're going to give it a little bit of a squirt here on the sides here. And that's it. From here on we go over to the compressed air and blow all the dust off. So the next step is to raise the grain. You want to do that so you can sand it smooth again before you assemble the bow because once you put the bow together it's a real booger to get it sanded smooth. So what I like to do is I, like, I use uh, le uh, lacquer a lot on my finishes. So what I'll do is look at my piece here and if I can on both sides. If I find one side that's a little worse than the other that's the side I'm going to I'm going to tape to my board here. So let me pull off a piece of tape. I should have had that ready to go. And come up about a half of an inch and tape it to the board. Remember, you're going to do this eight times. Then I'm going to take it in the other room and I'm going to give it a squirt of lacquer all over. I'm going to flip it over and give it a squirt of lacquer. Then I'm going to hang it upside down for the lacquer to dry for about 10 minutes. So we've given it a squirt of lacquer, now we're going to sand it smooth again. We've got the grain raised, and just like before, one or two strokes down the sides, down the faces, and then down the sides, and we're good to go. We're going to blow the dust off. So the first thing we want to do is we want to sand a flat side on all eight of the elements. We want to sand it from the point to about right here. Okay, now we're going to be sanding a compound angle on two sides of each of these bow elements. So one of the first things you really need to do, and I check it every single time I do a bow, is make sure my table is at 90 degrees to my belt. Then I have this fancy little jig that I made. I can work it on the flat side here. This allows me to mark on both sides of things so I can sand the compound angle evenly, and this helps me comp sand that compound angle. Let me show you. There's the Here's the flat side. And this is what this is crucial that you do this first and you do this on all eight of the elements. Next we're going to want to mark the uh distance on how far we want to sand the compound angle in. Let me turn this around real quick so we can see here. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to want to mark this off into about thirds for sanding the compound angle. I want to keep it at about thirds so that it makes a nice circle around the, around the bow. We're going to adjust this out just a little bit. And then I'm going to take a really good sharp pencil putting the flat side down and right into that notch. I want to mark that a little bit and then we'll come around to the other side and we'll mark the other half of the element. And there you have both sides marked. And we're going to give a little mark on that side. So I'm going to want to go to this outside mark. What I did here, I messed up here when I marked this side here. I had it crooked. I didn't have this flat side flat against the gauge here. Next, we're going to turn. We're going to go over here to the. This is a third set at, thir at 30 degrees, so that combined you have a 60 degree, and six times six is 360 gives you the complete circle. So the next step now is to sand those compound angles. Next step then, of course, is to sand the compound angle, keeping the flat side down against the board, uh, board here, and keeping this side flush up against the board here. We're going to sand it right to this mark. Now we're going to come over to the other side and do the other half. Same thing, flat to the board, pressed up against the guide. Right to the mark. So the next step is to fit our three elements on each half of the bow together. Flat side down, compound angle, 
and we're going to do that three elements times two. What I like to do is I use some double sticky tape and I'll take some painter's tape on top of that because it's a whole lot easier to pull this bow element off the painter's tape than the double sticky tape. And the, double st and the tape is what's going to hold this together while the glue dries. So we're going to park the first one right where I want it to go. And I'm going to take a drop of glue here. Doesn't take very much. Now you put it on the painter's tape because I can take that off and throw it away later. And take the next element and very carefully put a little bit of glue right on the joint where we're going to put it together. Doesn't take too much. And set that right in beside it, right exactly where it goes, and press it down into that tape. Take and squeeze that excess glue out. Usually, usually I have a couple extra toothpicks here so I can work the glue out and out of the back here, whatever squeezes out. So that's two elements. We're going to take the third one now and do the same thing with it. Put a little bit of glue on it and fit it right together and squip push it back down onto that tape and then squeegee out that excess glue and pick out that excess glue as you can and you're going to do this two times so the next thing we need to do is we want to make sure that the two halves match up perfectly and these are close but not quite so I'm going to find the square there and I'm just going to drag it once I'm just going to drag it once, put the two halves together, and that fits beautifully. So the next thing we need to do is we want to sand a perfectly round hole in the middle of the bow, and that step will that will become evident to you here in just a couple of minutes. So I like to use the spindle sander. This is a 5 8 spindle. And just going to squeeze the two together around that spindle until they meet. And here we have perfectly round hole. So now that we have the center sanded into a perfect circle, it's time to glue our two halves together. As we did before, a little bit of glue on the end of a toothpick or something. We don't want to get too much glue on it because we don't want so much squeeze out. And do it on the two sides. And as before, just fit it together as carefully as you can, as tight as you can, and push it down onto that tape. And the tape will hold it there while it dries. The next step is, is with the two elements that go in the center of the bow. Remember we sanded them flat but we did not sand a compound angle into them. These two pieces are going to be assembled just like so. And what I'm going to do is lay down a little piece of tape. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on one of the flat pieces on the flat side. Doesn't take a whole lot. Smear it around a bit. And we're going to right on the wood so that these two surfaces are flat, press that together. And then we're going to set it over here on the double sticky tape. And I'm going to wrap that tape up around it to hold that, jo that joint together. Just like so. And I'm going to put another little piece right across the top and pull it tight using the tape as a clamp. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make this little button. See how it has kind of a V-shape and I'll show you what that's for here in just a minute. This is going to help make the bow, once it's completely assembled, five, six, seven times stronger than without it. And the first thing I do is get this cut perfectly square and bring my, my uh, 
tail stock up with my live center and mark it, mark the dead center hole. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that down into a, just, oh, five-eighths of an inch diameter circle there. Let me get my hood. And remember to always wear your hood. Always check your clearances. We're going to check, make sure we got the right size. And I'm just going to use a parting tool because all I'm going to do is about a three-eighths of an inch or less. So let's turn that on and get that down to where we want it. Almost. That's all it takes. So while on the lathe, we found the little dimple here, and that's going to be our dead center. Looking back over the blade, I'm going to find it dead center right there. I'm going to cut a notch in all about 3 16 of an inch. And then we're going to come over to each side and flare it to accept the, uh, the two elements. This is a whole lot easier to do with a flat side to hold it steady on your table. And then I'm going to cut it off. That's all there is to it. So the next step is we want to take and glue this assembly onto this as long as it fits fairly decently, which as you can see, this one fits pretty close. So I'm going to set this down. because I don't need to do any sanding on it. I'm going to set that down, put a little bit of glue inside the trough. And then I'm going to show you with an ingenious way that I clamp this thing. We'll take a little bit of glue, so we're going to spread the glue there, set that in there, just like so, making sure that this is centered in that little button, about like that. Then I have this board, it's cut. About the same height as that, I'm going to set over here. We're going to drop this board right on top of there, which will keep this square to the surface of the table. And we're going to clamp it by adding a little bit of weight and letting it sit for a few minutes while it dries. So we've had it, we have our assembled six element, outer elements with the perfect hole sanded in the middle. We have our assembled two elements on the button. Next step is to fit the two elements inside the inside the uh, bow and find the spot where they fit as best as, as could be. Once I find that spot, like I've done on here, I'll take it, I'll make a mark so I go back in the same spot every single time. Next is to make sure we're touching on all four parts of the of the center element to the outer elements. In this case, we are. So what we would do after this is just a drop of glue here on all four and around the middle. So this element fits together really well. 
and I got lucky and it touches on all four corners here but if you had to adjust this you would simply figure out which side needs to be relieved go over to your little belt sander and just just kiss it and then come back and refit it and you want to do that until you have all four elements touching or touching in all four spots now that it is we know that the glue joint's going to be right about where this joint is here, where this union is. So I'll put a little drop of glue on each one. Got messy there. And put a little bit of glue around the inside of the where the where this is going to fit together. Matching your marks up, assemble it, and then using a, another toothpick, just clean off any excess glue that shows through. Keep in mind your glue is going to dry clear so you don't have to be at 100%. But the better off, the better. Toothpicks come in really handy for getting in, down into the corners in those little tight places. Okay guys, if you've stuck with us this far, you've seen uh, a really incredible project for you scroll sawers. Is that how you say that, Brian? Yes. Scroll, scroll sawyer. sawyer. Uh, but for you wood turners or flat workers, it may give you incentive to play with your scroll saw a little bit more. Um, that's a hard one to get off my mouth. Uh, but anyway, we're going we're gonna to give you a close-up of this as well as another uh, version that Brian has come up with for a box, you can see how this box opens up and just slides right back and separates the bow. It's a beautiful new concept to me anyway. So, Brian, thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it, and thank you so much for all your help and work here. Yep, well, listen, don't forget, if you've not subscribed to my channel, to click the subscribe button down below. Uh, hit the little bell icon, that'll give you an update whenever that, uh, when there's a new video that comes out. And give us a comment. If you have questions, there'll be some information in the section below this video where you can find some of the uh, tools that Brian has used and some, maybe even some other things. We might surprise them. Who knows? But anyway, thanks for watching.